What if I told you that there was a new-ish system that promised to be offline communication with unlimited access away from the hands of Big Brother? Something that you could get for maybe $25 on Amazon and would give you the ability to talk to your friends anywhere at any time when there's no phone service and nothing else readily available. All right, who's going on the I'd say sign me up. Well, that's what we're talking about today. We're going to be talking about... We're talking about the hydrogen car, are you? No, 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 we're not talking about the hydrogen car. No reason, just... Why? Don't, don't bring it up. That was... I think uh, we gotta go. All right, let's get out of here. So what is Mesh-tastic and why is it a big deal? Well, this, this is a Mesh-tastic system. This is a LoRa 32 board that we got in a two-pack from Amazon for literally $60. It's in a 3D printed case from MuziWorks. He dropped the STL file. It's free, it's online. You can also buy the case if you don't want to print one. And then I have a whip antenna. So all in, we're looking at about $35 for this device. And it gives you wireless communication via text on your phone, anywhere, um, to anyone else with one of these in range. It's basically like a Beofang or a radio because it's using, uh, it's a LoRa 32 board, long range LoRa. And that's it, it uses the 868 uh, frequency, which is slightly lower than Wi-Fi and therefore penetrates a little bit better. And what's insane is now we're getting these very, very, very tiny devices that are still having extreme range and really nice uses. And that's why we're talking about using this with the Mesh-tastic system. Mesh-tastic basically turns this into a mesh. So you and anyone around you can use the whole system to bounce off of each other and send message at an increased range. LoRa 32 stands for long range radio. It was originally developed for use on wildlife because it was a very low frequency, lower frequency than Wi-Fi. It could reach a little bit further. And it was mostly used just for pinging and tracking. And now Meshtastic with their little network and app, they have finally gotten it working to the point where it is usable and you can use it to send messages. So when you buy this on Amazon, you buy it in a two pack. And I know it sounds scary. Oh, I'm scared to buy this and put it together, but it's the definition of plug and play DIY. You buy two kits on Amazon, you buy your two whip antennas on Amazon, and then there's also batteries that you would buy on Amazon with it. There, those are the SH1.25-2 batteries. For those of you nerds who can't click the frequently bought together button. Yeah, if you can't um, look down below, and it'll see show frequently it. bought together on Amazon. The batteries are right there, but if not, the, the SH, the one that he just said, I'll put the text right there. And you buy it, you either 3D print the case or uh, buy the case, and then you flash it with your computer. It's super easy, you flash it, and then download the app on your phone and connect the node. One node per device is preferred, but you can connect multiple nodes to one device. I have this one set up as a client, not a router, but you can set one up as a router and all it does is act as a range booster to boost signals. So use case for this, where would I need this? Where would I want this? Um, the biggest use that I see, um, non-tactical, non-off-grid communication um, is hiking, camping, um, hanging out with your family. If you're camping and you mesh network one as a home base, well, now you have a home base that you could put a GPS node on, which by the way, you can buy those for also really cheap. And that way, everyone can see where home base is, where the campsite is, where they need to go to. And then this home base gives every single person with one of these access to texting their friends or you guys on your smartphone. Now, people have been doing videos on this and they've been getting some kind of insane ranges on it, but we wanted to do some real world testing. So we stepped out of our comfort zone and went into nature and into the world to see what real world testing is. This will be node test one, his node, my node, we're linked up, we're on that group chat. He is going to send a message and I'll see if I get it. Did you say send feed pics? <laughs> This is gonna be kind of a real world range test. As you can tell, I forgot my tripod. So um, HR is going to start driving down the road and at every few hundred feet, he's gonna to try to send a message at intervals. Um, this is probably what I would consider to be the most useful test that we could do. Um, yes, we'll get like a peak range if you have really good conditions. So if you're camping, hiking or whatever, and you have one meshed, um, you could hang it in like a tree or whatever, or get it to the highest elevation and get yourself kind of the best conditions. But I think this is the most kind of real world testing. Um, so he's gonna head down. We're gonna see how far away he gets before it stops working. Um, again, we have the, just like the cool little long boy antennas that are adequately sized for our needs. And we'll see how far that goes. So he is, uh, 
he's gonna head out here. All right, first test, 0 0.1 miles. Joe has received it. Um, it said, gave me an error, and it seemed like it didn't send, but then Joe said he saw it. So I guess we'll keep going down the road. We'll find another spot to pull off and try it again. All right, another success at 0 0.3 miles. I'm sticking this thing out the window because when we were testing it parked next to each other, it didn't seem to want to work in my car. Um, but you know, the whole point of these things is to like maybe mount it to your roof or string it up in a tree or something like that. So, you know, um, anyway, just ignoring the no parking sign in this driveway in front of me, but we'll keep going down the road. We'll try it again. All right, delivered and seen by Joe at 0 0.6 miles. That was the last spot before the road starts to turn. Let's get up through this corner a little ways and see what happens when we start to break the line of sight. I'm gonna go for a quarter mile or so here. I'll just try and guesstimate how far that'll be. Hello? Yo, I have not gotten anything. Yeah, I stopped at point nine miles after I found like a decent spot that wasn't in the middle of a turn. And I got two send errors, which clearly didn't go through. And now I'm on top of a hill um, kind of by the middle school, and I don't think it's sending from here either. Uh, so both on the device and on my phone, it now says signal bad. He said he's about a mile and a half away. So he's gonna start, he came back, and we'll see when we get him. Uh, he had to take a corner, so now he's got um, a bunch of trees and brush in the way. This is a good test. I mean, the straight line distance on these is probably very impressive. The high land is very impressive, but how about when we start like at the water and we just start working our way into the woods? Um, what's our real world distance? And uh, yeah, we still say signal bad on the phone. It is cool that it tells you on the phone to the battery percentage and the signal of the radios that you're trying to communicate with, the uh, radios in your mesh network. Um, so I should be able to see when he's going to get a signal too, which will be nice. So mine just sent. It doesn't tell me how far away he is. It just tells me acknowledged 0.6 miles again. So that come through? That did, that came through. So it looks like 0.6 miles is our accurate range. You thought we'd go the whole video without showing guns? Mesh-tastic, let's talk about it. What is our experience with these, uh, these little boys? Are they truly magic off-grid comms? Uh, I mean, yeah, kind of, but no. If you own a circular property that is one, or no, 0. 0.6 miles in a radius, so 1.2 miles across, and you have one of those set up on a high point in the middle, then you are covered. Yeah, then you've got comps. Um, yeah, they're, they're I, I find them to be massively overhyped um, for what they are. They're cool, they're I mean, awesome, yeah, don't get me wrong. Yeah, this unless you really neat. juice them up, but, they're, yeah, if they're I don't kinda neat, but. juice them up, they're just like radios, but you can text. Yeah, they are. They're a they're, pager. They're texty radios. Yeah. It's a pager. This is a pager. Yeah, pretty much. And then, yeah, the With range is not. typing ability. It's not what's claimed. We didn't find that kind of range, so we did take these out, guys. You know that we did. Um, and we found that our maximum range was about 0.6 miles, um, which 0.6 miles to scale, right, it's pretty far. Um, it's pretty much like if you go to Ruston, which is our local big area, and you have your family in Ruston, you can probably talk to them. You go um, to an amusement park, you go to a city that doesn't have super tall buildings, like what, that's basically Rustin. Um, yeah, you know, if you don't, if, you, if your kids have an iPod touch, clip one of those things to their backpack, get the app hooked up, and now go. you guys can text each other when you go to Disneyland or something yeah. like that. It'll work for that. It'll work for uh, close range comms, not long range comms. And the, what we've seen in the videos, the, the claim is always that it's long range. And what we're finding people do is they throw these into range test mode, which there's a little section on the app that says range test mode and what they're doing is just flying them as far as they can until the range goes away and we found that with our testing i could see him online and he could see me online but we couldn't send messages so like yeah we're within range but we're not within range enough to actually use the comms which i don't consider to be in range so yeah. a little bit misleading on that one especially all the tests that we've seen where people are going super long ranges and uh because at some point these just don't send messages that being said um, if you have boosters, if you set them up as boosters, like you drop mesh nodes, like if I dropped one here and I dropped one every 0.5 miles on the way into town, yeah, I'd, I'd have wireless comms and I could communicate with everyone. And they are cheap and you can hook them up to solar. So, I mean, there's the potential for that if you, if you like yeah. hardwire in nodes to the tops of trees um, in your neighborhood or whatever, then yeah, absolutely. Yeah, you can, I've seen people, they take these, they put them in like a weatherproof box 
they do some fancy cutting and gluing and they have an exterior solar panel and an interior battery and the whole thing's weatherproof. You can tie it up on a tree somewhere or, you know, somebody, some other stranger's roof if you uh, yeah, brave would, enough. I was going to say, what we've seen locally um, since since buying these even is I've seen people putting up mesh, mesh nodes in their area. Um, and the way they're doing it is uh, exactly that. They're putting, you know, weatherproof boxes with solar and an internal battery. Um, up in places and just kind of leaving them which is the way to use these so that's the realistic thing um we're just we're seeing a lot of people kind of blow this out of proportion online so yeah. they get like miles and miles of range out of these and they're not magic they're just radio they really like it's, it's they're radios it's a the it's day. a license free radio frequency is all the, the difference is. is it's just way easier to mesh than baofangs because yeah. you can mesh baofangs you can do that you can turn two of these into repeaters if you want to get some not exactly complicated wiring going, but it does re require kind of splicing some wires and re-hooking them. But you can turn these into repeaters and then you can set that up that way and then bounce across repeaters. These can be encrypted. These cannot because they are just on the most accessible radio frequencies out there, yep. which is why they're like 30 bucks a piece on Amazon. So that's, I mean, that's the advantage of these, right? 30 bucks a piece on Amazon too, basically. Yeah. End-to-end -end encryption. Um, it'll bounce off of other nodes, so it's easy to mesh together. Uh, and, and 0.6 miles, I, again, that's not small. Um, we went out to Rustin with this and we flew the, the drone to follow him and his uh, range on yeah. this actually outlived the battery life of the drone, but the drone was at about 3,300 feet or something around those lines uh, before I had to return home and come back. And he even kept going a little bit after that. So they're not bad, um, especially considering, again, you can mesh them together. So even if uh, if he had one and then someone else had one where I was, and then someone had them on the other side, we would have a bigger node. So he could talk to the person way on the other side who would otherwise be out of range to him because yeah. I have one suddenly and I'm in range. So it would bounce. Yeah. And the other thing too, I mean, you, everybody gets two of those. If you've got a big group of dudes out there, everybody sets one up as a client and one up as a mesh node. I forget what the term for that is. But then as everybody's spread out, not only do you have your client that can access the mesh, but you're creating the mesh just with the one set up to do that. So, you know, that's another possibility there. Yep. The other use case, the biggest use case that I see, or at least the most useful one that I can think of right off the top of my head is say you're camping in the woods with a group of people. Um, one of these could be home-based mesh node. You set it up at camp, you put it in a tree or whatever, solar backup battery case, big antenna. Um, and now you have, even if there's no phone service in the area you're at, everyone can talk to each other. Um, and I think that that's really underrated. That's a great use for it. And uh, your cost is, you know, that's $30, $30 per person. It's not that expensive. Um, so it's not a huge cost to get communication. And especially say you're camping with a group of people and you guys are, you know, skiing or whatever, it gives you a way to communicate without phone service, which could, you know, be life-saving in the in the uh, event of an emergency. So yeah, that's pretty much it, guys. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. Hopefully this uh, educated you. And if you decide to go with the MeshTastic, uh, they're really easy to put together. We, we can't simplify this enough. Like, it's so easy to use, honestly. If I can do it, anyone can do it. I'm kind of what people would consider to be a dummy. Autistic? Yeah, and I can do it. And if I can do it, you can do it. So it is really easy. It's a great system. Just, again, it is limited in its capabilities. It's not something magic. It's, it's LoRa. It's long-range radio. It's still yeah. radio. Um, so be prepared to buy more than just one for you and one for your kid. Be prepared to buy one for you, one for your wife, one for your kid, and then a mesh node that you can just have stationed somewhere. And if you're camping, again, definitely get a mesh. Get one that is just designated as the mesh node, the home base that's going to extend the range. Um, and again, you can put GPS on these too. That's a pretty big deal. Yep. Um, so you can put GPS on these. So if you are hiking, camping or whatever. The main, one of the main advantages over something like this, like ranges are similar. But if you want to know where everybody is, latch set GPS those up. on. They you get can do texting. Stuck in a tree rut or whatever. Yeah. Boom, easy. Send someone to them. They're right there. Um, so that's pretty much it, guys. Thanks so much for watching. And as always, we will see you in another video at some point, probably.